Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, and I'm showing you tools of the trade that we use at Jeffalytics. In this video, I want to show you how we use Zapier to save us time every single day, 365 days a year here at Jeffalytics. Zapier is awesome because it does the things that I don't want to do. It automates the mundane. It just works. And so since it works so well, I'm going to show you how it works for our business, show you behind the scenes, and tell you what I love about Zapier. So check it out and you're going to learn a lot here in this lesson about Zapier. So how do you automate common tasks with Zapier? Let's talk about automation. Automating common tasks saves my team 400 hours a year. And why do we do that? Because spending time logging data into spreadsheets is not my idea of fun. And as a business owner, I have to keep expenses low and in line. And not only that, but I've been a digital nomad for the last three years. Here's all the different places that I've been to since 2015. And when I'm traveling, the last thing that I want to do is data entry. And I'm going to ask you, what would you rather do? Data entry or visit Hobbiton in New Zealand? The last thing that I want to do when I'm traveling is enter each sale that we get from our courses into QuickBooks. And not only that, but I don't believe in hiring virtual assistants or VAs to do common tasks especially if it's something that can be automated. Why? Why don't I believe in it? Because I don't think we should have manual processes in this era of interoperability. It just seems ridiculous to me. I've been involved in the past with human intensive businesses and my current business is also human intensive, but we are using humans to do advanced work, high quality knowledge work. And to do that, we only work with highly skilled people and we let the computers do the rest. And the key tool that I use for all of this right now is called Zapier. Zapier is an essential tool for just about any business out there. What Zapier does is it connects thousands of apps together and then it integrates even when there's not a native integration. And this is why it's important because a lot of apps will integrate with other apps once or twice or in a few different instances, but they don't really do it consistently and it doesn't always work with your technology stack. And so Zapier is the one that connects when something else doesn't have a native integration. And you can connect your apps using recipes or they call them zaps. And a zap is where you connect this thing to another thing. Or you can create your own zap with any type of steps. And here's how I describe Zapier in layperson's terms. If this happens, then do that. But not only that, if this happens and it meets these criteria, do that. So there's a filtering capability around the criteria and finally, if this happens, do this, that, and the other thing. So you have the ability to have one action trigger multiple actions on different systems. And that's pretty cool, right? Here's some examples of how we use Zapier at Jeffalytics. One, tracking customer purchases. So when somebody buys on our courses, we automatically keep the customer record in a spreadsheet and we can use that to verify purchases and just to keep our lists in order. Same thing happens with QuickBooks. When somebody buys, we push the receipts into QuickBooks and it makes bookkeeping a breeze. We also kick off downstream processes. When somebody buys, we put them into the onboarding sequence to let them know about the materials in the course. And this is something that works for Active Campaign. But the cool thing is that when we use Drip and we integrate Drip with WooCommerce, we have the ability to kick this off without having to use Zapier. And that's nice because it doesn't go against our rate limits and it works even better than using an intermediary like Zapier. Number two, lead generation. We can take Facebook lead ads and we can integrate them automatically into our email marketing systems. And the cool thing about this is that Facebook actually recommends Zapier as the main system for taking leads out of their lead ad system and putting them into your email marketing platform. Of course, Drip has a native integration here and so that's why we love Drip so much. We don't even need this for our lead ads when we're using Drip. Survey responses can turn into leads really easily. You can share leads across accounts. So if we get a lead from Jeffalytics and they're interested in analytics stuff, then we'll put them in our analytics course list as well. We can keep track of leads and sales really easily. So anything coming from WooCommerce or Active Campaign can go into PipeDrive, which is our CRM system. Number three, customer support. We can take Facebook group posts or Facebook posts of any nature and we can put them into our help desk, Help Scout, and it works great. It is a really fantastic integration to take the Facebook groups, which I'm not in all the time, and put them into our help desk so we don't miss anything. Number four, list management. You can add webinar registrants to your email list. 
pretty easily to make sure that they have the right tags and the right criteria to make sure that you can do your automations into the future. You can take actions within the same platform. So if they do one action in MailChimp, you can unsubscribe them from another one. Of course, systems like Drip, they automatically do this for you. You have automations within Drip, so you don't really need to worry about doing Zapier as an intermediary. Whenever possible, always use the native integration. You can take it from one platform to another. And this is something where Zapier is necessary because an email marketing platform is not going to integrate with another email marketing platform, most likely. And finally, social media automation. So we don't actually use these social media auto posting capabilities because we have several tools that we use for auto posting and we also like Buffer as well. But if you wanted to, you could make it so that every single new WordPress post goes to your Facebook page, goes to Twitter, wherever you want it to go. So there's a lot that Zapier can do. But there are also some things that I don't like. For example, many of the integrations are of minimal utility. Let's talk about Google Analytics and Zapier. I begged them for years in my presentations. We'd get people to tweet them and we'd get them to vote for Google Analytics. This happened for three years on stage. I was voting for Google Analytics integration and they finally released it and it sucks. It sucks so bad that I don't even know what to tell you. It's just dumb. And here's how it works. Basically, they have three zaps that you can use that are out of the box. And the one trigger that there is is when a new goal is added to your account. Okay, what's the point of that? I don't even know what this thing means. Does that mean that when somebody reaches a goal? I don't think so. I think it just means that there's a goal added to your account. At least that's what it says. And so this is weak, 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 weak. If you compare that to Clipfolio, which is an awesome dashboarding tool, they also integrate with hundreds of services and they integrate with Zapier, but their Google Analytics integration is so robust that I can click on a button and have a five minute summary of my entire 2017 year in review. That is cool. That is way cooler and way more useful, the Clipfolio version, than the Zapier version. So I say this, dear Zapier, you are mailing it in, especially with your Google Analytics integration, but with just about everything that you do, I think you're mailing it in with the triggers, and I think you're slipping and you're focusing too much on adding new technology. And I'm sorry to say that, and if you're watching this, let's have a constructive dialogue. But in this case, you are really mailing it in. You had years to do this. Google Analytics is the biggest platform out there. Everybody else integrates with Google Analytics. There's literally thousands of apps that can do everything with Google Analytics, and your integration is disappointing at best. Number two, your pricing scheme is ridiculous, stupid, and punitive. Now, I absolutely hate punitive pricing schemes. And what I mean by that is when they charge you for the success of your business. And as you can see here, they charge you not only for the number of zaps, which I'm cool with, and the premium apps, fine, 50 at a time, 20 at a time. I think it's still a little bit low. I think it's a little bit ridiculous on that sense. But the tasks where you go from 3,000 to 15,000 per month is ridiculous. Now, I had to upgrade my plan to the 15,000 per month when I ran a promotion on AppSumo, and I couldn't just like increase it for a month. They basically turned off Zapier because I was on the 3,000 per month plan and I got 5,000 customers in the course of two weeks. So you penalized me for the success of my business. And I get it. Okay, it takes a little bit more resources, but not that much more. And frankly, you guys have actually gotten about $1,000 more from me because of this one little thing where I had success for one month or I did it three or four times. And you've locked me in. I can't go back. You start charging my credit card immediately. I really just don't like your pricing. I think your pricing is stupid. You jump from 3,000 tasks per month to 15,000, and then the next one, you go from 15 to 20. It's like you're penalizing people for being successful and for automating their business. It's like, yes, you should automate your business. Yes, you should use Zapier. Only you shouldn't do it too much. You shouldn't do it too much, and if you want to do it more, then you're going to have to pay more. So automate your business and get all these things off your books, do everything, but if your business gets to be too successful, we want a piece of that. F you. Honestly. F you for doing that. I hate it. Everybody else hates it. You know what? I praise Zapier. I love it for everything that you do. But your pricing scheme is stupid and it's not entrepreneur friendly at all. Charge me for what I use, not for my own success. Number three, Zapier is getting more complicated over time. And that is not a good thing. So for example, when I test an app and when I put in the triggers... A lot of times the test step doesn't work. I have to go in there and create a new record. Well, that's fine for an email address collection for a drip lead, but what about WooCommerce? 
You're making me do a transaction in my own system. What about the other transactions that are already in there? Why don't you use those as a test? I don't understand why this testing step has gotten worse, but honestly, about 50% of the zaps that I create now break because you can't test this for me. I don't know what's wrong with it. Fix it. Just get it done. Number four, they're focused too much on new integrations versus making their major platform upgrades better. Quantity over quality. Here's an example. A couple days before I recorded this, I got a email from Zapier about new updates. They have 11 new apps and four updates to existing apps. So 15 new app upgrades. Tell me, have you heard of any of these apps? Are you excited because now they have these items out there? Are you excited because they have all these knockoff products that they support? Do you really care about the quantity that they have? Or do you want them to make things better? Because guess what? Your Google Analytics integration sucks. A lot of these other integrations you have sound cool on paper, but they don't really do much. So fix those, make those better, use the major platforms, and stop trying to go quantity over quality. Number five, many platforms charge extra to use Zapier. This is annoying because I use WooCommerce and I integrate, and guess what? It costs money. So it's not just the Zapier fee that I'm paying. I'm actually paying WooCommerce in order to send data into Zapier, and then if I'm successful and I sell a bunch more, I'm paying Zapier even more. I don't understand. Make these things work. Everyone wants a cut, even though they should have integrated in the first place. And yes, I'm getting a little bit ranty here, and yes, I'm probably sounding like an old curmudgeon, but that's just how I feel at the time that I record this. Number six, native integrations are way better. It's always better to have a native integration between two platforms than to use something like Zapier. It's cheaper, faster, and it always works because it's a native integration. And so here's an example of WooCommerce Drip. I don't even need to send my WooCommerce subscriptions into Drip. It happens automatically through this integration much better than having to deal with a third party, much more foolproof, and I know it's gonna work because it's working between these two items. Okay, so even though I just ranted there and I got a little bit heated, I still love Zapier. And the main reason is because other app developers don't integrate well, or it's not really possible to integrate with every single thing out there. And so that's where Zapier comes in. Zapier is relatively affordable and it is consistent, it's less expensive and more reliable than manual labor, but I would move away from Zapier if the native integrations were better. That's just how I feel right now. Hopefully they improve it. The reason why I do these videos is twofold. One, to tell you about awesome technology. And number two, it seems like our audience is getting savvy enough and we're getting big enough that these changes are getting implemented. So if they can implement these changes, I'm back on board with Zapier. It's the best at what it does in the marketplace but I don't really like the direction they're taking the product right now. It's all about quantity over quality. But I'm gonna keep on using it for the foreseeable future because there's some vital features that I need for my business. And you should use it too. I think every business needs to use Zapier because it works, it's robust, and there's a lot of cool things going for it even though I'm a little bit unhappy with some of the directions they're doing. But they have time to change those and I hope that after seeing this video, they will make those positive changes. So if you're interested in trying Zapier after seeing this unbiased pro con list, visit jefflytics.com slash Zapier to find out more.